Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on medial patellar luxation. We talked about anterior cruciate ligament rupture repair and also therapy and diagnostics, essentially. We also expo uh, showed you that virtually all the animals with anterior cruciate rupture, anterior cruciate rupture, will have an L4-5 subluxation. L4-5 luxation occurs all the time. That compromises the vastus lateralis relative to the vastus medialis of the dog's leg, essentially. The, the quadriceps mechanism, let's knock this down. The quadriceps mechanism of the dog has four bellies, a lateral, a medial, a central, and also a vastus erectus femoris, essentially, all attached to the patella as they're attached to the patella. And we have this neurological interference that occurs at L4-5. Essentially, we end up with a phenomenon where we have the lateralis of, this is the pelvis of the canine, here's the knee, the lateralis is getting a D where the medialis, rectus femoris and, and rectus intermedius, vastus intermedius are getting an A, so that, that causes the patella, which should be right here, it basically is pulled off to the medial side. Now in the bigger dogs, it basically ends up with an anterior cruciate rupture, but in smaller dogs, dogs under 20 pounds, will end up with this continual traction of the patella over to the, uh, to the central aspects. And what it does is it wears down the trochlear sulcus here to the point where the animal flexes its quadriceps like to jump up on, on thing, and then the patella pops itself out of the uh, trochlear groove essentially and takes a shortcut as the animal bends or flexes the quadriceps and also flexes the, the, um, the gas, I'm sorry, the um, hamstring muscles to flex at the knee. And so this is, in fact isn't the situation. We found that these animals respond quite nicely to the adjustment, the same adjustment that we use to take care of it. The etiopathology for anterior cruciate ligament disease and medial patellar luxation is exactly the same. It's an unbalanced quadriceps mechanism held in place by subluxation at the L4-5 area of the lower spine, essentially. And so we adjust the whole animal using the technique that we show you on the vomtech.com website and uh, basically three passes. And what that does is it optimizes the functionality of the genital femoral nerve, which fires off the quadriceps that is basically getting uh, an unbalanced fire. The genital femoral nerve in the canine actually comes off at L, L3, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the, when area 4, 5 is compromised, essentially compromises the vastus lateralis, but not the vastus medius, the medialis. And then, in other words, we get this unbalanced flexion of the quadriceps mechanism. So when the animal extends, it internally rotates, and that causes the problem. So we see that same phenomenon occurring in anterior cruciate ligament and also medial patellar luxation, what we'll do is we'll endeavor to go in and balance these animals with this condition in hopes to try to rebalance and keep that in there. The worst that can happen is that we can go in and regroove the trochlear sulcus. In other words, we can just groove that out again and make it deep, actually square, and the patella will not come out. And then what happens, even if the, if the leg is significantly bowed, because it'll actually be bowed due to, due to um, uh, the fact that form follows function, the, the legs will actually straighten out once we put that patella back in place. Now, if we can put it back in place by adjusting this animal, the patella, which, I'm sorry, the bones, which the femur and the, and the uh, tibia fibula basically will look like they're bent like this and they will straighten right back out again. It usually takes anywhere from three to five months for that to come be completely straightened out after we have either surgically gone in and repaired that or whether we've repaired that with a combination of VOM and also uh, laser. We'll also basically, since this is in fact a condition involving the knee, we will involve the knee with frequencies uh, in this particular capacity. We'll, um, there we go. And what we'll do is we'll laser this animal's knee essentially with frequencies for the joint and also, which is uh, 153 and then 42 is a frequency and 36 are frequencies that we use for the actual knee itself along with 45 for the bone. And that actually accelerates the rehabilitation and the reorganization of the knee. Thank you for listening to this information about the uh, uh, medial patellar luxation. And I encourage you to go to the bombtech.com website and look at, in fact, uh, the data on how it is that we do this work, uh, essentially why it works and how it works. And we have that information for you, for you free with three videos that we have on that site. Thank you very much and have a great day.